Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. This program is brought to you by Lee's Family Trailer Sales and Service, one of America's fastest growing RV dealerships. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Well, they, they were the fastest growing, one of the fastest growing in New England. They're now owned by Camping World, and this weekend there will be a grand opening of Camping World in Wyndham, Maine. But we're not going to talk about Camping World tonight. We're going to talk about Cold Springs RV, and we've got Ray Panzino, who is the general sales manager. Ray, thank you very much for taking time. I know you've been burning the candle at both ends down there. It's, it's crazy for all of our dealers, but we thought... Uh, Let's give Cold Spring some publicity here. You have always been a good supporter of Nervder and always in the Boston show. And oh, here comes here comes the first time out from Petro. Thanks for having me, Bob. And John. <laughs> Go ahead, John. We've got to be breaking some kind of rule. Hi, May. You're on TV. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Introduce your wife as your co-star. That's my wife, May. For those of you who've not met my wife, May, that's my wife, May. She's in the audience tonight. <laughs> but at, at the beautiful Courtyard Hotel in Syracuse, New York. I am trying to be breaking some kind of rule. We have three Italians on the show. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Wow. I yeah. mean, that we should be charging. So it's, it's going to be a very loud show. <laughs> loud, loud and a lot of interruptions. Not right. only loud, but we'll be talking over each other all the time. Ray, give us a little bit of your background before we get into some of the uh, reasons we wanted to talk about your full-service dealership tonight. Oh, sure. Uh, well, I'm originally uh, from Massachusetts. I grew up in the city, but I started uh, very young. I was introduced to camping in Cold Springs Campground and started coming up here for the summers and raking sites and, and cleaning up and picking up trash and been here pretty much ever since. But before then, Where are you I from, Where are you uh, from specifically, Ray? Somerville, Mass. Hey, Somerville. They grew up. They grew up in Somerville. I grew Zagami's up. Somerville. from Somerville. Uh, isn't that where all the Italians are from? The no, they're from Revere. Revere. The ones that came out of the, the ones that came out of the West End or East Boston. Yeah, yeah. They, they moved moved out to the suburbs. Yeah. Hey, maybe you guys are classmates. No, I think I'm a little bit older than. <laughs> he, could, he could be my long lost rich uncle. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah. He, he, maybe he went to school with with May. But uh, actually, see, I lived right on the line on Broadway, across oh, the truck sure. field. And, yeah. and so I went to Medford High because the, the building that my grandfather built, the last three apartments were in Medford. The first six were in Somerville. The last three were in Medford. So oh, I, okay. I went to the Medford school system. Hey, you know what? We were going well here. We had an Italian guest, and then <laughs> yeah. Walter had to come on. Uh-oh. And messed it all up. Walter, go back on. We need a few more Italians. <laughs> We got we got Dante's on, so Dante. I know, that's what I meant. Support, I, yeah. I said we had an Italian guest. Wait, watch this. Hey, hey, Dante, have you made reservations to go over to the open house down the street to, uh, this weekend? <laughs> he lives he lives about a mile down the street from Lee's. Oh well, he's going to go get free hot dogs. Well, yeah, right. But, Why not? Walter, good, Walter, good evening. Ray, hey, Andrew, Andrew Malone. Do you know Andrew Malone? Do I know Andrew Malone? <laughs> Where do you see? Oh, Andrew Malone. Love Cold Springs RV. Bought my camper from them. Thank you. We appreciate that very much. There you go. Yeah. So, Ray, tell us who the people are you have on the wall behind you. Oh, I forgot where I was. Oh, that's my uh, my beautiful wife and my two little girls. Well, they're not little anymore. 14 and 16. Yeah. Well, you are young. <laughs> you are. You are. <laughs> yeah. The, the school... <laughs> <laughs> they had to build a new school after we left. God, you know, what did yeah. it? Ray, wow. Ray, one thing you'll find out about this show is that, number one, we're as loose as we possibly can while still being legal. And secondly, <laughs> in a short period of time, our audience, our studio audience, our live studio audience will pretty much take over the show and determine what questions you're asked. Yeah, that, that says he's not, he's not going... Not going to the Camping World Open House. Okay. No, nope, but he's going. He's going in with the motorcycle. I'm just sneaking in with the motorcycle, whatever that means. So I didn't, I didn't know he had a motorcycle. Yeah. All right, yeah. So Ray, we built this out as a full service dealership. One of the things that yes. I've always liked about 
Cold Springs and the Silvers and your team up there is yeah. you, you have in that one location everything that an RVer would want. And, and other of our dealers have some of it. And they might have A, but they don't have B. But, but you've got in one location a dealership, a parts and accessory store, a brand, brand new service center, yeah. brand new body and collision shop. Yeah. You, have, you have storage in the winter. Yep. You, and, have a, and you have a five star Cold Springs Camp Resort just behind the building, which the, the Camp Resort came first, right? Correct. The camp resort came first. Um, 1969, it was started. And as, as it grew, you know, there was a need to, to have a, an RV dealership at some sorts. And then it just grew from there. How many well, dogs? that's pretty rare. I have many? never, 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 never in all my traveling in the 20 years I've been an RVer seen. No. Yeah. Never seen a campground slash dealership in the same thing but probably the closest thing would be ocean lakes um, uh well no the closest would probably be lazy days yeah yeah, yeah. I, don't know yeah how, I don't know how they're doing on on collision repair but yeah. certainly in the northeast there's there is nothing going down yeah. all the way to to maryland on yeah. on something like that uh the the collision oh. repair i know i know scott gave me a tour when they first opened that up, that looks like not easy, easy stuff to do. How do you, how do you find people? To... Well, you know, we've, we've like everything else and every other uh, department, you know, you, you go through a few before you find some good ones. And fortunately now we got a, a good team, but when we uh, started the uh, collision center, you know, Scott, when Scott does something, he, he does it 100%. So brand new state of the art, 52 foot spray booth, uh, our own mixing center, you know, we, we were tired of having to rely on other companies to do work that we couldn't do here. So uh, right from the, the get-go, we wanted to make sure we had all the tools necessary to properly take care of the customer and efficiently. And so um, just started from the ground up and then and, and went to town with everything brand new in there. You know, Ray, a few years ago, Bob and I spoke at a uh, Northeast Campground Association meeting up in, uh, we're right in New Hampshire, right down in uh, Merrimack. And we had a discussion with campground manuf uh, manufacturers, camp campground managers about their um, likes and dislikes about RVs and their relationships with the dealers. And th the sad thing that most of them said was that they never had a relationship with any dealers. And I think it's pretty bad that, you know, when you buy a camper, of course, now there's more and more options. But 10 years ago, when we did that seminar, um, the only place to go with your camper was a campground, you know, right. unless you did a Walmart type thing. You know, today there's Harvest Host and Boondockers Welcome and, and um, a whole bunch of those other programs. But you actually get to know what an RV is like when it's on site. Sure. And sometimes these RVs that are built, they'll they'll build the power plug on the opposite side of where the um, where the power pedal still usually is, or they'll work make you work all the way underneath the RV to put the sewer hose. You know, yeah. ridiculous stuff like that. At least you guys got the capability to let the manufacturers know that hey. If you're going to do something like this, check with us first because uh, we kind of have a campground on site. Uh, let me, that, let that's me gotta be a benefit. Let, let me try something here. I'm, I'm getting better at some of the stuff that I do here. Oh, he's going to press a button, and we're going to go black, Ray. Huh? We're, we're going to go black. We'll go black. Uh oh. See. What did I do? Uh -huh. The value and love for camping that were started by Robert and Gail Silva back in 1968 remain to this day. I should know because I'm their granddaughter. With the rich history at Cold Springs RV, you can buy with confidence. With the best selection in the region, you know you will be getting the best price. Come score a deal on a new or pre-owned pop-up, travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome. Cold Springs RV is your destination for all things camping. The brand new state-of-the-art service facility is ready for you. 
We service all makes and models, regardless of where you purchased. If your RV needs bodywork, we can make it look new. Cold Springs RV, Route 114 in Ware, New Hampshire. Your destination for all things camping. ColdSpringsRV.com. See? That's yeah. Scott's, that's See, Scott's yeah. daughter. Who? Yeah, that's, that's one of Scott's daughters. Yes, Alexa. Ah, so third third generation. Now, what what is her role at the campground? Or did you just convince her to do a video? We just uh, she was um she just finished college actually. Her and her sister Alicia just graduated college, um, but they were working here for the summers uh, when uh, during break. Uh, and Alexa was uh, helping out with a lot of that kind of uh, stuff. Uh, both of them do, do a great job. Alicia was twins? Sounds yeah. like the twins. Yeah, twins. Uh, Alicia was helping up upstairs in the uh, with bookkeeping and and stuff like that, and Alexa was helping us down here on the floor with advertising and marketing and and everything else that goes along with it. Well, I mean, it's true because none of your colleagues know how to even turn a computer on, right? Absolutely, I'm constantly right. trying to teach them how to do basic <laughs> it, computer it, stuff. He's telling the truth, you know. John and I show up with a video camera, and Ray runs to the other side of the building. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's, there's good reason for that. Oh, wait a minute. We got a bunch of questions here. Let's see. Walter Swenson stayed at Cold Spring in 1980. Walter, oh that was 40 years ago. <laughs> Walter, 40 they still, years they still, ago. They still had black and white TVs at that time. Oh. And a lot, a lot less sites, too. Yeah. Huh? Dante wants to know, are you in New Hampshire? Yes, you're in Weir, New Hampshire, W-E-A-R-E, -E, which is really not close to anything. Well, it's west of Concord. What about fifteen miles west of Concord? Yeah, North we're West. kind of we're kind of in between Concord and Manchester. You know, we're 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 centrally located, so we're kind of off the beaten path. But when you get here, we're forty five minutes from NHIS, the International Speedway. Forty five minutes from Lake Winnipesaukee. Thirty minutes from uh, the Mall of New Hampshire. Uh, a lot of the ski resorts are fifteen twenty minutes from us. So it's it's we're off the beaten path to get here. But when you're here, we're nice and pretty much centrally located. Yeah. Well, I said before we came on, I've got to come up there with the grandkids and uh, we'll take a bunch of videos and then we'll have Ray back on as a cameo appearance guest um, and talk about what the fun stuff that we had, because um, t tell us about the campground. It's not exactly like uh, 10 sites. No, no, it's um, it's grown yeah. up over the years. They do um, they do a superb job over there. So it's, it's a camp resort. There's uh, 400 sites. Uh, all the roads leading to all the sites are paved, and each section is electronically gated. We have um, a pool complex. That's just one of the five pools we have. Uh, we have jacuzzi. Wait, say, say, wait, back up, back up. You have five pools? Oh, yeah. Yep. Don't most campgrounds have one? Yes, sir. <laughs> what Now, you must have pools for specific things, kids or older yes. people. Oh, yeah. We, we do. Work. We categorize the five pools. We do. So uh, Scott's brother Todd uh, is just like Scott on the campground side. Everything is 110 percent, and nothing is done unless it's done right. So we have uh, one is a kid-only pool, one's an adult-only pool, uh, one's a general public pool for everybody, uh, one's a a wading pool, and then um, and then a kiddie pool. Wow. wow. It's there you go. It's, yeah, it's all fenced. It's got a nice uh, perimeter fence around it. So you're not, you know, once you're in the pool complex, it's got a decks all around it. Uh, there's a big mushroom sprayer for the kids or adults too. It's it's a really nice complex. The, the pool yeah, but, area is very, it's one of the most popular parts in the, when the temperatures like today. Yeah. Do you have a tiki bar? No tiki bar yet, but they, they have a full snack bar within walking distance. Okay. Then now, there was one. Right. What is it? Bay Bailey's has a uh, adult pool, but with a bar at it. Yeah, so, Bailey's has a nice, nice campground. Yeah, no, Bob, Bob, I need to change that a little bit. Bailey's has an adult bar with a pool at it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's probably a better better description. Yeah. Uh, how many how many people work at the campground in the summer? You got four hundred sites, so if you've got an average of three people, yeah. right? Twelve. You got you're gonna have a couple of thousand. 
No, not not that many. I mean, it's it's seasonal, so we we rely on a lot of the seasonals here. They'll um they'll work for us while they're up here for the for the summers. Um, oh. A lot of a lot of younger people, teenagers, when they're on summer break from school, and then we have a a full time staff that's with us with us year round over there. It, that's pretty cool. So so a family that's camping up there with a teenage kid and he, he doesn't yeah. want to listen to mom and dad all day, he can you know hook up with well, you guys and earn some money and and meet other teenagers up there. And that's exactly how I started. I, I think I started 11, 12 years old and raking sites and picking up trash and working for them for the summer. And all these years later, here I am. Now, so, now so we're picking up trash? But yeah, in the campground. Yeah. No, can gone. We, gone. <laughs> so, so can we... Oh, I didn't mean Friday night at the bar. Right? <laughs> so can, can we make the assumption that you met your wife at the campground? or is Actually, no, I didn't meet my wife at the campground. Um uh, John, uh, Bob, I was 12 years old when I was at the campground. But you, well, yeah, but you've been working there since you were 12 years old. Well, I didn't meet my wife when I was 12. I met her when I was uh, 30. Yeah, but she could have been working at the campground. Ray, I told you it's not scripted. She could, not scripted. <laughs> she could have been a customer. <laughs> let's go over to our let's go over to our audience here. Jerry Plant says at majors they sent the body work to Route 44 collision. Now we have a second option. So no, see, no Ray. Jerry, Jerry, you have the first option, and you make Route 44 collision the second option. Isn't that how it works, Ray? We'd like it, yeah. We'd, we'd like to earn his business. Yeah. Well, the fact is, I mean, if you send an RV to a regular body shop, they might not know that RVs are not made like cars. Right. And that's, right. The, that's the big difference. You know, and, and another reason... Ray. Talk talk about that because a lot of people, you know, half of our buyers now are first time buyers. They get a lot to learn about the industry. Yeah, so so definitely a, a distinct difference doing body and paint work on an RV versus a, an automobile. Um, and, and John's right. You know, if you don't have the first hand knowledge, what's behind? Great, great, great. You don't tell John he's right, Bob. <laughs> Ray, say that again, please. <laughs> we have to listen to that again. I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, right. but, you know, it's what's behind the paint that's important, how the, the coach is built versus an automobile. So there's definitely a, a difference to, to learn to do it the right way and, and have the finish come out like it was done at the factory. Ray, you may, one, you may have already noticed that I'm, I'm pretty much the intelligence part of the show because Zagami thought that you met your wife when you were 12 years old. It, now, I, maybe, not, maybe in I, other I, parts I, of Somerville, <laughs> maybe other parts of Somerville, they were married at 13 and 14, but you didn't, uh, you didn't fall into that trap, right? Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So look at, we got Sandy Ellenson. Sandy, we, if you're in Alabama or Georgia or Florida, she says, I want to go there. And by the way, she's trying to make yeah. it up here. Yeah, well, she might. She might make it up between uh, Elkhart. She's got some contract work in Elkhart and before Hershey. So she That's may. Right. She's got the whole west part of the country to go. Yeah. She's, she's a right. camp consultant. So, Sandy, you should come up and see what they've built up here. So if you if you come up, uh, we can get you over there and check it out. Well, it's also, because it's a campground, it would be a tax-deductible trip for Sandy. I'm sure every trip that Sandy makes is a tax-deductible trip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Jerry Plant, same thing. How many people work there? Oh, about half of them. Yeah. Now, Walter here. Walter is our technological wizard. So he has already gone to probably Google Earth and zoomed down on it and says, I think I see a hot tub, too, on the satellite map. Is that true, Ray? That, that's true. We actually have two hot tubs. We have the original one, which is your typical round one that's uh, – I believe it was 10 feet in diameter. We just finished building a brand new 20 foot long one last. Uh, oh God, it's been two seasons now. Uh, so yes, we have two big hot tubs. Okay. So Jim Convoy says route 44 is great. That's good. And Eric Tuller says, hello from Mosheim, Tennessee. Eric, tell us where that is. I never heard of it. Is it near? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait. We can just ask Walter because Walter's got Google earth open. Walter, tell us where Mosheim, Tennessee is. Well, no, Walt, Walt, oh, Walt, Walt is going to say, you know, I was in Mosheim one time and I stayed at this particular campground and they had, had an issue. So he'll, he'll, have a, he'll have a story about Mosheim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And Walter says, nothing wrong with what Bob said. I've known my wife since fourth grade. <laughs> yeah, but Walter, Walter, you were 17 years old. <laughs> In the fourth grade. <laughs> Donna, Donna, Donna will like that one. <laughs> where, where, Ray, where else can you go? You you come on to a show and, and stay in a studio audience and you get insulted. We well, haven't insulted him. He didn't insult me. That's no. all right. So, yeah. so let's go back and no, talk. No, about I insulted Walter by saying he was 17 years old in fourth grade. Right. Eric says near Knoxville, northeast along I-81. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. So he's near the Great Smoky Mountains then. Yeah. So, Ray, let's go back to business just a little bit. Yeah. What's your view in uh, the the buying the buying conditions today? Dealers are short on inventory replacement. Yeah. Give us, give it, tell us what you tell customers when they come in. What 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 are their expectations in the post pandemic environment where some some forecasters are saying we're going to sell five hundred and seventy six thousand RVs this year? I think they're crazy. I think the number is way off, but It'll be in the 500,000s, but for the new people that are watching or new prospects that haven't been to Cold Springs RV, tell them what to expect. Well, and I'm sure people are hearing it in, in a lot of industries, if whether they're going to buy lumber or, or an automobile or a boat, it's the supply chain is what drives the industry. And, and right now, that's still the, a major concern. Um, that the RV manufacturers can build plenty of boxes. It's just everything that goes along with it to complete it. That has been uh, the challenge since it started. So they're going to see uh, not a lot of available inventory on dealers lots. Um, a lot of stuff like we have on order that's coming in is coming in pre-sold. So unfortunately a lot of first time buyers won't have the luxury to browse a lot of units that they typically would in years past. Um, hey, Ray. So Yes. Let's just use as an example, because we talked about this before we went on the air. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually, we saw it in the video, in the video that uh, Alexa did, yeah. uh, that area, that drone shot. Right now, mid-June, yeah. how many units do you normally have on site at Cold Spring? So between new and pre-owned this time of year, we typically have 150, 175 units on the lot. Okay. How many you got there right now as we speak? Um, right now, that's not sold. We have about we have about twenty new and pre-owned that we own. And then what I've been doing and to help other customers out is um, we've been taking in a lot of consignments. So we have probably another fifteen or so, sixteen consignments here on the lot, uh, which use pre-owned inventory. So total, we have about probably thirty pieces on the lot okay. here. Right now. So one fifth of what your normal inventory is. Oh yeah, at least one. Ray, fifth. Talk, talk about that consignment, and uh, you know, a lot of dealers now are buying RVs. How, how does that work for somebody? Because some people just get to a point where they're not using their RV anymore. How yeah. does that process work? So, and for folks like that, this is the the best time to to do something with it because they're gonna get uh, they're gonna get premium dollar for it right now if it's clean, late model. You know, um, they, we offer one of two things. One is we can buy a unit outright from people if they don't want to wait and go through the consignment process. Uh, or two, if they need a little bit more for it, then we're willing to, to write a check. Well, we can put it on consignment and usually get them what they want. So we charge a nominal fee. Uh, I typically try to find out what the customer wants first, and then I'll, I'll hopefully there's enough room to mark it up from there to, to cover our fee so they get what they need and we get what we need and everybody's happy. And it's a very simple process. You just you bring it in, uh, and I'll have you sign a quick document and explain everything to you in person, and and you leave it in, in good hands. And this time, uh, this year specifically, stuff hasn't been maybe a week, two weekends tops. It, it sits before it's, we get a buyer part. It, 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 I assume a lot of that is people that they've decided to come into the RV lifestyle and they'd really like to buy a new one. Yeah. But they're seeing low inventories, and maybe they can't get the floor plan they want. So it's it's easy for them to pick up a pre-owned unit because the dealers have them available. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, because we have a friend that's trying to sell it on their own right now, and um, you know they live at the Cape, and the unit's in Worcester. So if somebody sees it, they want to drive. They have to drive 150 miles to show them. Yeah. Um, is there a pre-set percentage 
on the on the sale that you take um, versus the owner take, or how, how do you work? Who gets what? So so again, if 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 it's through, if we're doing a consignment process for a customer, yeah. um, I, I try to find out what the customer would like if they were selling it on their own, and then yeah. uh, hopefully there there's enough for me to mark it up from there, so I don't have to take it out of their proceeds. I can take their unit, they tell me what they want, and I'll mark it up from there to as and advertise the sale price. And and we've been uh, pretty fortunate in selling it and to get the customer what they need without dipping into their proceeds. Okay. So it's a pretty painless. It, once they sign that agreement with you, they don't have to come back and show it. You guys show it and everything. They right? don't have to do anything. We handle the complete. And, and what's, what's nice about a dealer doing it, and, and well, specifically the way we do it is, is we go off of finance and I can take a trade against it because I'm looking to buy units. Yeah. Um, we, if they have a payoff involved, we handle that transaction. And then if there's proceeds left over that belong to them, then we'll cut a separate check to them. And they only have to come here the one time to bring the unit in or depending on where it is, I can send somebody after it. We try to make it as easy and stress-free and pain-free as possible for the customer. Okay. That's good. I want to, I, because you know what? There are people that, you know, when they get along in age or for one reason or another, um, you know, health is, is a factor in one of the, one of the uh, members of the family that yeah. just don't travel anymore. Why not? Right. Why not uh, utilize the market to yeah. get the most for it? Absolutely. And we, we've seen a, a mix of everything, uh, all different reasons. And, and that is definitely one of them why we've been taking in a lot of consignments is they not use them because of health reasons. Some we've taken in, uh, people bought last year, brand new, brand new to the camping experience in the RV world. And they used it last year during the pandemic when it was in the height of it. And they decided that they're going to go back to the regular way they travel and they just don't need it anymore. Hmm. Well, one of the things Ray, in talking to a lot of the dealers, again, because inventories are challenging and hmm. people, they come to the dealership and they know they want a uh, double bunk bedroom in the back. They got four kids and, but they can't find it because it's very popular. We have so many families camping that they actually buy something. They want to have an RV. They cannot have the RV they want. So they right. buy something on the lot knowing they're going to trade it in a year or two. Is that, yeah. is that realistic? That's very realistic. Yeah. That happens a lot as well. They just want to get out there and camp, whether it, like you said, whether it's the layout and the, their ideal forever unit or it's something just to get them by for now. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Ray, do you see um, a difference? Uh, uh, what do you see for a long range forecast on this um, shortage issue? Well, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to start seeing the other side of it until probably 2023. I think we're going to go through the remainder of this year, all wow. of next year. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's amazing because, you know, you read these stories. I've heard that Grand Design has like, like four or 500 units sitting, sitting 90, 99% done out in the field in Middlebury, Indiana. Yeah, they uh, all do. Have you heard the same thing with other manufacturers? Yeah, uh, yeah. We talk to a lot of the transportation drivers when they're dropping off new units for us, and um, that's the same story with everybody. There's literally thousands of units sitting in the yards in Indiana waiting to be completed. Hmm. Hmm. You know, we never really talked about yet. We've talked about everything, but but talk about the brands that y'all carry. Can yeah, so um, we do? Can we I do, do a lot of, oh, let, me, let me do a quick commercial. Yes. Then we're going to come back and do that. And John, while I'm doing the commercial, if you would check the notes, uh, the comments, because they're they're building they're building up. So we're not going to play the video, but we do want to thank Lee's Family Trailer Sales, which is now Camping World of Wyndham, Maine. Their contract to sponsor the show runs through the end of June. So any other dealers that are out there that might want to sponsor the show from July 1st to December 31st, give John or I a call, and we'll be glad to do that. And as we noted earlier in the program, there will be a grand opening of Camping World in Wyndham, June 11 to 13, starting uh, this weekend. So if you're up that area and you want to see what they've done to the facility, stop in on Route 302 in Wyndham. Okay, so where and, were we, Ray? With that being said, Sandy says she's in Washington right now and is heading east between Frog, which is the Forest River Owners Group, 
Yeah. In Hershey, I think Frog has a meeting every a uh, Not Hershey, no. Elkhart. Elkhart. That's yeah. that's that's why I say she's 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 got commit other other commitments in Elkhart besides Frog. And then before, so she was thinking about coming up to New England between Frog and uh, Hershey. Right. That's what it says. Yeah. Heading that way between Frog and Hershey. Let me uh, let me throw a question from our resident engineer. Can you read that, Ray? Oh yeah, and, and I didn't I didn't want you to memorize it, Ray. I just wanted you to read it. <laughs> I didn't. Well, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to read it out loud or not. <laughs> Everybody else is seeing it. <laughs> So uh, to answer Walter's question, yes, and we've already experienced that, but we're we're a very low pressure dealer. You know, we would tell people right up front if the time frame doesn't work, if it takes too long for them to for the unit to come in, we don't keep their deposit or whatever. It's, I mean, so yeah, but we've already experienced that. I mean, we've had stuff on order in January, February that was supposed to be here in April that's still not even scheduled yet. Well, talk, talk about the you know because one thing that lots of times. Customers don't understand the other person's business. They, they know they want an RV, but they don't understand the complexities of the RV industry. Yep. And talk about what's happening to every dealer right now with respect to price increases after they've they've bought a unit. And and you know, some people say, "Well, the dealer's taking advantage of me." Well, they they're not taking advantage. Yep. But give it give it to us from the dealer perspective how that's impacting your business and what you're doing for the customer okay. to make it whole. Yeah. So, and just like if you go to home, one of the big box stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, lumber has jumped 300%, uh, appliances, furniture. So that trickles down to the manufacturers and obviously then they pass it on to the dealers. We've been getting hit with price increase after price increase uh, since early fall, really. And, but it's getting more prominent now. We've gotten one the first of every month for the last three months in a, in a row. Uh, in a row, and um, the manufacturers aren't offering any price protection, whether it's a unit on order for a, a dealer's stock inventory or if it's already pre-sold with the customer's name on it. Um, I've been doing this a long time, and it's the first time ever I've ever experienced something like this where they're not price protecting retail sold units. So what we tell customers, um, one, in relation to the time frame, if it doesn't come in in a, a time frame that works for the customer, we, we're not going to keep a deposit or, or make them stick to the deal or wait for it. We'll gladly refund the deposit. If it comes in and it's gone through one, two, three, four price increases, um, we have, tell them right up front, if we can absorb the price increase, we'll make every effort to do absorb it. The likelihood is, especially on something like a motorhome, which we've seen some significant price increases, um, we can't absorb it. They'll have the option to, to still get it at a little bit higher price than we initially quoted them. If not, we won't keep the deposit and we'll refund the deposit and, and let them back out of the deal. It's just, it's such unprecedented, unprecedented times. It's we're trying to accommodate all scenarios. Um, mm. It's just, it's, I've, I've never been through this before in my life with, with the price on not being price protected. Where is this price increase going back to? I mean, I, I know, I know people can't build a deck because pressure treated lumber is is hard to get a hold of, et cetera. But where did all the, is, does it all stem back from the pandemic that production stopped? Yeah, and it never, yeah, it's never caught back up again. Absolutely, um, all, all the way down the supply chain, and that that, the, that was the thing. And, you know, I know uh, from an RV standpoint when the factories shut down last uh, March and April then the suppliers shut down. But also in the middle there, the distributors who had orders placed with the suppliers can't cancel their orders. And yeah. everybody at that time, everybody in the industry thought we were dead, that nobody ever was going to buy an RV again. It was just the end of the world. This, this virus was going to kill everybody. And then May 1st came and, and the floodgates opened and everybody wanted to buy an RV, but they had stopped all that production. They canceled all those back orders. And, those, and, and so when they canceled the back orders of that magnitude, the factory shut down. And guess what? When the OEM started to order the air conditioners, they couldn't get them either. Yeah, because then there's the, the employment problem. When, when the pandemic yep. really hit and everybody got laid off or lost their jobs or uh, stayed home, um, and with all the stimuluses out there being offered by the federal government, 
it's still very challenging to find employees to fill all our needs. Um, yeah. So it's it's the trickle effect. Yeah. And then back, if you guys remember back a, a few months back, Texas had that deep freeze. One of the main foam suppliers is out of Texas. That jumped prices on foam and uh, set everything back another month. Well, like Ed Luterco said, nice to have you on tonight, Ed. Uh, he said, try to order furniture. Actually, try to order anything. We went to Florida a couple weeks ago to try to buy a winter a house. house. And we, could, we couldn't buy a house. We, we, yeah. we wouldn't take our money they, because they're, they're spacing them apart. And because Bob, tell, they, them, tell them about the price difference with your brother-in-law's house. If you wanted to buy the same house in the same neighborhood, how much price difference would be in just a year? Yeah, he, he, he's down at Del Webb, Naples, and we, we like that area. And if we bought the same house, spec for spec, what was it made? Twenty five thousand? Uh, at least. It was twenty five thousand dollars more, and going up five to ten thousand dollars a month. And they're it's gone up ten this month. It's gone up ten already. Yeah. Okay. May says it's gone up ten already, but you know they're they're only letting a few lots a week release because between not being able to get the contractors to build them. And the escalation of the pricing, and if if we signed a, a a deal with them two weeks ago, that house wouldn't be ready until May of next May or June of next year. Oh sure. So we wouldn't even get into it for this year. I mean, so it is. You're, you're right. I mean, it is everything under the sun. And the other thing that I noticed, and I just noticed this probably actually since we came back up to Maine for the summer, but every car dealer that I go by. Is almost like our dealer. The, the lots are empty. Yeah. The, I mean, it's it's crazy. But I haven't. Maybe I just haven't paid attention in Massachusetts to it. But uh, well, it, it's the same here. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same here. But anyway, let's go back to one of our um, one of our uh, audience members who's who was a guest here just a few weeks ago, Sandy Ellenson. Did you say you carried the Thor Outlaw Class C? Do they make a class? They don't make a class C Thor, do they? They do. They do. They do. Class, yeah. class A and the class C toy hauler. Yep. Yeah. They 2021. Do. That's my next rig she wants. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, so, so Ray, answer the question. Do you, do you sell the outlaw? So we do not carry the outlaw. Um, we carry the four winds class C's, the hurricane class A's. Um, I can, at one point we could get outlaw, but they weren't producing them. So, uh, it's hard to say what's going to happen with Thor the next twelve to eighteen months as far as inventory goes. Yep. All right, but I got to I got to call Sandy on the carpet though. So, because last week she said she was going to buy the new Intera from East West that Lisa Reese just brought out with the uh, East West. So you can't, you know, Sandy. I know you make a lot of money consulting with the campgrounds, but you can't buy it in Terror. In a, in an outlaw, so you gotta you gotta pick and choose your uh, product there. But Bob, tell her we will we will give her easy questions if she gets us Lisa Reese to come on our show, which we've had her ready I, I, to be I, on for a couple times. I, yeah, I tried again a couple of weeks ago, and she said no. So she's not gonna. Yeah, Sandy, work your magic with uh, Lisa and see if she'll come on the show. You know, if if we don't get Lisa, we'd have to put Doug Get It on that. You know, oh God, boy. That could go. Yeah, that, <laughs> that could be a long night. Well, yeah. Sandy says, "Oh man, I lost you guys. Can't hear you. That's all right." Sandy, listen <laughs> to this. It was right better if you did. It was right better if you didn't hear that. Sandy. Yeah, yeah, we did. Well, now, see, Walter ordered furniture, and it should arrive. Oh, that's right. Now Walter's in Florida. Walter yeah. bought a place in Florida, and I think he even stopped in North Carolina at a furniture place on the way down, because Walter tells us Walter. Ray, you need to understand, Walter lives in Massachusetts. He just bought a house in Florida. He can make it there in like 16 hours. He's like a machine. He's nice. like an auto, talk about autopilot. So uh, back now, I'll, I'll ask Lisa or Mark Kroll is awesome. But Walter tried to buy furniture for his house down there. And uh, he says it might arrive between now and the end of the year. You can't live that way. No, no. Yeah. Always be like us. We have extra furniture everywhere. Great. Talk about the new service department. I don't, I don't know if I, I pulled any pictures on there, but it's yeah. it, it's a beautiful building and quality. Yeah. There we go. Talk yeah. about 
again, state of the art. You know, we, we've been, we've had the main dealership for a number of years and service bays over here. So we knew what worked and what didn't work. And when Scott designed the new service center, you know, he, he implemented all the stuff that we wish we had at the, the main building for service. So everything state of the art, all the right power at each bay, water at each bay, um, uh, high enough ceilings. We got uh, safe, plenty of safety devices in stock with the uh, overhead trolley system with the harnesses for the guys. Uh, so it's it's the thing that I when when uh, I got my first tour of it when it was still in construction, and they had that extension on the roof was going up. And I said, "What the hell is that?" And <laughs> it is so clever. You know, you think about it. How many times do you go to the car dealer or an RV dealer? And you're outside, and yep. it's raining or snowing, but you have this is like a a, a drive-through service rider type. Yes, rider. yeah. So the the two motorhomes that you see in there are actually facing the wrong way. Normally, normally <laughs> that whole area is empty, so the customer will pull in or drive in, depending on what they have for a rig, and pull right in under there and stop and walk in the front door. And a service rider will advisor will come out with them and uh, listen to their their wants and needs and inspect the the unit. And they kept out of the elements. Mm -hmm. Talk. But how uh, those guys get? How those guys get in backwards? Uh, that was just being stored there for, for <laughs> whatever reason. <laughs> I thought. I thought the photographer that didn't know anything about the RV business says, "Hey, Mister, will you put your RV up there? I want to take a picture." And yeah. that very well could have been too, or it could have been on a Sunday when they were closed. Yeah. Let's, let's go back. Sense. Let's go back to the customer for a minute. Uh, you know, one of the issues, and we hear it a lot. We have all these new first-time buyers. They're mm -hmm. coming in. The dealers are busy. You're pushing out a lot of units on a Saturday or Friday when you do that. Explain your PDI process and how you take that step to manage the customer's expectations, especially when they're a first-time buyer. What kind of education, what kind of uh, walkthrough do you give the customers? So, and when you're so, done with that, I got a better question, but go ahead with that. Okay. So you, you, know, you, you have a better question than- Go ahead, go ahead with that softball. Go ahead. All right. So, All so right. that is definitely a, a challenge in pot with first time customers because their expectation of the RV world, um, we try to meet it, uh, but they have no idea until they actually get out there and start doing it. So we do a full PDI, whether it's a new rig or a used rig we sell, um, spend four or six hours checking all the systems. Then it goes to the detailing shop to get detailed. But when they come to pick it up, or uh, we deliver, we do a, do a two hour demonstration walkthrough with them uh, to try and show them the important stuff. The biggest thing is we could spend six hours doing a demonstration and they're only going to retain a certain amount. So we try to educate them where to find the answers. We're always only a phone call away. But what we didn't have when John was a little boy was the Internet. And, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that they can find at the touch of a button that that makes their life a lot easier. So we try to show them how to. Forest River, for example, has a phenomenal app uh, that will basically walk you through every aspect of your rig, whether it's a tow behind or a motorhome or a pop-up. So we just try to educate them on all the tools and resources that are at, at a touch of a button for them when they're at a campsite and can't figure something out. Well, you know, that, that's a, let's, let's not take that one lightly because uh, teaching people how to find the information and where to find the information you're right. Yeah. It, it's more important than that two-hour walkthrough because most of the yeah. time they don't listen. Maybe they'll videotape it, but they get to the campground, they forget where to slide out switches yeah. or how to you know hook yeah. up the fuel hose. What we have to teach them, and, and this is something that our industry has to do a better job at, Absolutely. is educating them and showing them where that information is. And in many of the manufacturers, the Winnebago's and the Thor's, they also have those sites. They do. I've, I've sat yeah. with dealers and said, well, what do you think about this particular site or uh, uh, this video that XYZ manufacturer had? And they sell the product and they say, I never saw that video. So, yeah. you know. and, that, and, and that's what I tell the, the sales team. The first thing I tell them is, is to do their, their, the customer a solid. And when they're at their desk with the customer, ask them if they mind if they download the app on their phone from right there and then. So it, it's cut and dry and it, the customer doesn't get confused at what app it is. So. So they've been uh, doing good at, at doing that, which has saved a lot of phone calls and frustrated customers because it, you're right, when they get to a campground, a lot of them don't have cell service, but they have internet. So it's a lot easier for them to access their app than try to call us or another dealer to ask a question. 
So uh, we just try to educate them on where to find the, the, the tools they need and the answers they need. Now, Ray, I'll get to uh, my very let's, good question. Let's, let's see if DePedro can remember the question. Or, okay, no, I've got that written down. I, I, wrote, I, I wrote it down because I know that Zagami would, would ask a question longer than most people answer. So, but I do want to ask a question based upon the answer that you gave to my friend Bob. And you said we give them a two-hour walkthrough. Okay. Yes. Would you say that on the day that they're picking their unit up, that they're probably only listening to one third of what's being said only because of the fact that that, especially if they're a first time camper, that anticipation of getting into that camper, whether it's a towable or, or motorized, that anticipation is so great that that, that process about, how to make sure that that sewer hose is hooked, okay? Yeah. Or that hot water button is over here and not over here. They're only going to hear a certain portion of it. So the fact that you do it for two hours is amazing because there are dealerships that I've seen, I've been with people that have picked up a new motorhome where it was 20 minutes. Yeah. And you know what? Move them in, move them out. You do yourself as a dealership more of a disservice because you're going to get 20 calls back from that <laughs> one person. Well, you're, right. well, absolutely, you're absolutely right. And, and yes, the day of pickup is is usually very stressful for the customer to begin with, especially if they have the kids with them and yep. The, yep. the surrounding noise. Yeah. Or their so, dog. But we, we spend the two hours with them because we want to make sure that not so much that they understood everything because they never can in that amount of time, especially if they're new. We just want to make sure that their stress levels come down, their their comfort levels gone up, and they feel comfortable leaving the yard. Yep, yep. And, and that is a stressful ride home, especially yep. if they're going to. Do you send them over to your campground? Generally, we, try to send them there for. Well, what we do offer them, we do offer them a free night stay next door, and they're more than welcome to do their shakedown trip there. A lot of people do take us up on the offer, but they can use that that voucher for any time for the whole year. So some of them opt to just go home and then. If they have a, a gig list of issues that need to be addressed on a brand new unit, they'll come back and spend the night. And we can address their their issues then, so we they don't have to keep coming back and forth. So we try to make it as as customer friendly as as possible. Okay, so here's my question that I wrote down. Here's my question that I wrote down. Oh, that last question wasn't the question. <laughs> that, no, 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 that was, was a follow up. Paper. He, that was a follow up to Bob. Yeah, he just turned the presentation to you and figure out what he wanted to ask. So here's my question: In the last two years, in particular. Yes. Okay. What have you seen with the age of the person? How have the demographics changed, if at all, with who's coming in looking at um, camping equipment now? So in the last two years, as far as the, the demographics, as far as age, that hasn't changed dramatically. We're seeing all different age groups, families to older couples without kids anymore. But what has changed is the first time buyer. We've sold more in the last 12 months, the first time buyers than we have probably in the last 10 years combined. Oh, God. Oh, it, it, and the, the overwhelming part is, again, their expectations. So yep. on a brand new unit, especially the first time buyers, we, we grill them at the desk to let them know, listen, this is camping. It's supposed to be fun. You are going to have issues with the brand new unit. It's, there's no question about it. A lot of them, most of the time, are just minor readjustments because when we prep a new unit, when they're built, they're built by people like me and you guys out in Indiana. They're not built like by robots like the auto industry. Yep. Then they're towed to the different dealers throughout the country. We're prepping them, but we're sitting in a controlled environment. We're running the furnace. We're firing off the water heater, but we're not letting them run around the clock like you would when you're camping at a campsite. So we need the customer to understand your first few trips are going to be a shakedown trip. Don't get stressed. Just we need you to get those gremlins worked out. And once you go by that trial and tribulation period, then you typically have a unit for many years that you love. And and but it's the people that that buy with the with the expectation that I'm buying brand new. I shouldn't have any issues. That unfortunately in the RV world, that's never been the reality. And it's right. it's, yeah. worse, it's worse now because of the the pandemic and the supply chain and the workforce. And so. We just ask people, listen, don't get frustrated. If it's a usability issue, we will get it turned around lickety split. If it's a cosmetic oh, yeah. issue, just bear with us because it does take time to get parts. It does take time to work with the manufacturers. Well, you, you hit on what I think is the most important thing. And when I talk to the CEOs of these companies and, and their, their salespeople, 
the one thing if I if I could have this industry do one thing better, it would be that to manage the customer's expectation. It's okay yeah. to tell them that they hand built. It's okay yeah. to tell them that problems are going to fail. It's it's not an automated process. And but they come into it thinking it's going to drive like the Cadillac or the Volvo that it was right. built, yeah. built the same or the computer or the smartphone that never breaks. That's yeah. not the nature of the RV industry. Could we do better? Absolutely. But oh, could, sure. we do, could we do better at managing the customer's expectations yeah. as to what they're buying, especially when it's a first time buyer? And that's the biggest thing. You're right, is managing their expectation because, and the manufacturers, uh, all of them for the most part, do a good job. It, but they can't, they can't accommodate every scenario. Uh, they don't know if you're going to be bouncing around the back roads of New England, hitting every pothole and going in the woods with a camper, or you're on the nice flat roads in Florida or Texas. So, the the, the RVs for the most part take a take a beat and getting towed around, depending on the, the driver. So, they do a good job of trying to build them to cover all aspects of it, but it's just impossible to, to make a, a camper that you're not going to have things loosen up after the first couple trips because, again, it, everybody drives different, everybody tows differently. Right. Let me, let me get this comment in from uh, Eric Tuller, uh, who's motion in Tennessee. I videotaped my walkthrough when I picked up my 2020 Travato. On my cell phone, Sunshine State RV in Gainesville, put customers up at a local campground so you can use the systems before you take off, which is what, what Ray had mentioned. But I'm curious, as far as a percentage of customers, how many actually take you up on that for the first night? How many, you know, are, are that, you know, in tune with it? Say, you know, it does make a lot of sense to be sitting next door and come in tomorrow morning and go over the things with the staff. Unfortunately, it's a very small percent because a lot of people are, they got life. Life is gone. They got to get home because they have other obligations. They got kids. Got school. Whatever. There's just too many variables for them to commit to that. You know, we do. We do see a handful of people do it, but it's a very small percentage. We will see people come back, like I said, throughout the year and use the the, the free voucher to stay next door and while we do some warranty work on it, or uh, just to say hi. But a very small percentage initially will will use it for that initial first night shakedown trip. Okay. Ed Letergo's got a good question here. Um, have you learned if a similar problem with parts sitting on docks versus a manufactured issue? <laughs> oh, yeah, actually. <laughs> so as recently as a few weeks ago, there was something like 22, 24 con uh, container ships sitting off the coast of California. Right. Usually there's, there's a, a couple, and they usually sit there maybe a, a week at a time at the worst case scenario before they're allowed to go in and offload. There's been two dozen plus sitting there for as long as four, six, eight weeks before they've been able to offload. Well, you know, Scott and I were on the, uh, the same analyst call uh, when that was discussed. And, and uh, there was another call about four months ago. And, and the way the person described it is, there, at that time, there was a hundred container ships sitting oh, yeah. in the Harbor that yeah. could not get to a dock because the docks were full, but they couldn't empty the container ships at the dock because they didn't have any trucks or truck drivers to take the stuff from California to Indiana. It is oh, a absolutely. very complicated process, and it's not just the RV industry. But can you imagine 100 container ships sitting with no place to go? Oh, yeah. In fact, one of them, Jerry, you probably saw it, uh, Jerry Plants with Major's RV down there, uh, I just saw something about two weeks ago where one of them, they were so the company that owned it was so frustrated they sent it from L.A. through the Panama Canal and uh, up to the East Coast and it went through the Cape Cod Canal and it no was kidding. it was huge. Wow. It, it, these ships are you know not yeah. for the faint of heart. But Jerry, uh, your railroad bridge was there. You're right down there on the canal. Were you were you there the day that thing? And they they made a big thing of it. They said, hey. This ship came to Cape Cod because we couldn't get it. You know, they, they were coming up to Boston. They could not get a dock. And, and this, a lot of the stuff is perishable, too. I mean, it's not just yeah. RV parts. Right. Some food things and, and other stuff that, uh, you know, can destroy you uh, early. Uh, we got about five minutes left, Ray. If, if you would, because the market has changed so much, is it even possible to say that we have a typical buyer or, or for Cold Springs RV, what, what is 
what are you seeing that's hot? What are, what are people asking for? Um, you know, for us, e even in the midst of this, it's still a mix of everything. You know, we, we do, we do a lot of towables, uh, probably in the 27 to 33 foot range. That's where the bulk of them go. And then we do a fair share of motor homes and park models and pop-up campus. But, um, it's, it's been a mix of everything. So even the first time buyers that we're seeing the overabundance of them, they're very diverse, uh, from, I mean, we've sold motorized to first time buyers. We've sold park models, pop-ups. It's just, yep. it's so it's a mix of everything. Well, you know, Jerry, Jerry, Plant has a, Jerry Plant had a good comment here. Jerry says that, and Jerry's an inspector. Um, <laughs> and, and we recommend people get things expected, especially if they buy in third party pre-owned units. You just don't know. But Jerry says yeah. the inspection business is down because sellers won't wait for a pre-purchase inspection. And I assume because they're afraid they'll lose the unit. Somebody else is going to come in and say, I'll buy it without an inspection. Yeah. Yep. It's crazy. It's, seems to be the case. I mean, yeah. I, you know, and everybody we talk to, and it, so many different aspects of the industry are all saying, I've never seen it like this before. No. And, um, you know, when you've got other industries that are dying – be, you know, like the live event industry was dying while the RV industry is, you know, seeing yeah. record years. Now, the some restaurant of changing now, but, you know, when you look at look at this, the state of Vermont, which last year couldn't um, let its campgrounds open to any right. degree of, you know, and look at, are, are you seeing any difference in Canadian, you do any Canadian business at all? Um, Canadian Canadians is a lot of they're still on lockdown pretty much that we right. have we have a bunch of a few uh, great guys and gals from Canada that are in our uh, spate of 20 group that can't go to the meetings because if they travel outside of Canada they get still have to quarantine for two weeks when they get back uh, so they're still really on lockdown because hmm. I know last year when we were up in northern Vermont um, no Lake Champlain now where was it Plattsburgh we were right around 4th of July. I see all these boats that are still in the harbor and they said Montreal, you know, the giant oh, wow. sailboats that were taken off the water. And then I realized these are boats that they keep them in the U S for the winter yeah, and then bring them back. And they couldn't, uh, they couldn't get them back on the river to go up, to go oh, up to sure. Canada again. So crazy stuff. Great, great. For the fans who are on tonight and uh, the ones that will be watching this uh, for the next few weeks as they share it, let's assume they don't know anything at all about Cold Springs RV. So okay. how, do they, how do they find you and uh, tell so them about your dealership? We are uh, south, southern New Hampshire, uh, kind of in between Concord and Manchester, um, probably 35 minutes over the Massachusetts border. Uh, right on Route 114 in Ware, W-E-A-R-E. -E. Um, we're we're very low pressure in in all departments, whether it's sales, service. You know, we really uh, we're not looking just to sell you something. We want to create long lasting relationships. Uh, stop by, you got some time. You want to see the campground, or you want to look at some RVs, and uh, we'll have one of our uh, staff members show you around. And we really are that low pressure. It's just you know, RV buying the whole RV lifestyle is supposed to be fun and and not stressful. So we've done our best over the years to make it that way. You certainly have a great dealership, Scott Silver and Todd Silver and yeah. the family. You got a great team up there. So thank you very much for joining us this week on RVing in New England. It's always a pleasure to see you. John, any closing comments for well, you? I just want to say that I'm looking forward to coming up there for some weekend with uh, my wife and grandkids. We'll take a bunch yeah. of pictures and then, and then we'll be able to say we went to Cold Spring. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there you go. Go. thank Fair you guys enough. for having. Thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure. All right, you did a great job, Ray. Closing thank commercial, you. and then we end it. Thanks very much, Ray. All righty, guys. This edition of our being in New England was brought to you by Lee's Family Trailer Sales and Service, one of America's fastest growing RV dealerships, and was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.